Bill Stack, author of instructional videos, books, and articles about home flight simulation. This video, Using Air Traffic Control for Instrument Flight Rules in Microsoft Flight Simulator, is deliberately designed and carefully constructed for self-learning. Using air traffic control will help you increase the realism of your simulations. Principles and methods can be applied to other flight sim programs. This instructional video explains the use of air traffic control for simulating general aviation and commercial aviation. It is limited to single player simulations and it is only for home flight simulations. This video does not explain ATC functions that are not represented in Microsoft Flight Simulator, particularly instrument approach procedures, holding procedures, or in-flight emergencies. Before we proceed, I remind you that my works are copyrighted. Copying or distributing any part of my videos without my consent undermines my ability to produce those videos and to earn my living. That is why copyright infringement is against the law. I appreciate your honoring my copyright by not copying and distributing my videos. Air Traffic Control is a service operated by an appropriate authority to promote the safe, orderly, and expeditious flow of air traffic. It prevents collisions by maintaining separation among aircraft in the air and on the ground. It also provides weather reports and pilot advisories. In furtherance of these objectives, pilots must communicate with air traffic control and follow its instructions and clearances. Realistic instrument simulations require air traffic control. The first air traffic control you will encounter are clearance delivery, ground control, and the airport tower. As your flight begins, you will encounter departure control and approach control. During your en route legs between airports, you will communicate with air route traffic control centers. Most communications received from air traffic control are clearances or approvals. An aircraft requests clearance to do something and air traffic control clears the aircraft to do that. The aircraft does so only after receiving a clearance from air traffic control. Some ATC communications are instructions. ATC instructs the aircraft to do something, such as taxi to a runway or head in a certain direction. The aircraft follows the ATC instructions or requests clearance for alternate procedures. Some ATC communications are readbacks. The pilot repeats the communication to ensure accuracy. Frequencies for ATC communications are shown on aviation charts, on the map feature of Microsoft Flight Simulator, and in the ATC window itself. Air traffic control services available in Microsoft Flight Simulator are accepting IFR flight plans, clearing aircraft to taxi, take off, and land to avoid other aircraft, vectoring aircraft along a filed flight plan route, and vectoring aircraft around other aircraft in the area to maintain separation. Air traffic control also provides weather reports through several automated methods. The differences between air traffic control in Microsoft Flight Simulator and the real world are significant. In Microsoft Flight Simulator, air traffic control is available everywhere. It is driven by menus. Our audio communications are simulated for us. Communication frequencies have two decimal places instead of the usual three. We are allowed to simulate flight anywhere in our simulator without air traffic control, which would cost real-world pilots their licenses. We cannot declare emergencies in Microsoft Flight Simulator. Airspaces do not match all airspaces in the real world. And some real-world communications are not supported. Before you begin using air traffic control in Microsoft Flight Simulator, check the settings to be sure your ATC will work as needed. From the simulator's main screen, click on Settings. From the Settings screen, click on General. Or from the simulator window, click the Options menu, then click Settings, then click General. In the Air Traffic Control box in the upper right, be sure the three boxes are checked. You may also select a pilot voice of your choice. To begin using air traffic control, open your ATC window. Click on Views, then Air Traffic Control, or press the tilde accent key on your keyboard. 
When ATC has a message for you, it opens the window. If the ATC window blocks your view, you can close it by mouse clicking on the X box in the upper right or by pressing the tilde accent key. You can also move the window by dragging your mouse at the top and you can make it larger or smaller by dragging the edges. To simulate air traffic control for instrument flight rules in Microsoft Flight Simulator, an IFR flight plan is required. ATC does not know what to do about your flight without your filed flight plan. Flight plans are made and filed through the Electronic Flight Planner. My instructional video using the Microsoft Flight Simulator Electronic Flight Planner explains that topic in detail. To begin an IFR flight from a controlled airport, pilots contact clearance delivery or the tower at that airport. To begin from an uncontrolled airport, pilots contact clearance delivery or the tower at the nearest controlled airport. Microsoft Flight Simulator automatically displays the correct frequency in the ATC window. This video will take you on an IFR flight from Peachtree DeKalb Airport in Atlanta, Georgia to Nashville International Airport in Nashville, Tennessee. Both are controlled airports. Whenever an aircraft moves around a controlled airport, the pilot must request and receive clearance to do so from the tower or ground control, whichever applies at that airport. We can begin our ground operations at a gate, a ramp, or a parking area. Even though we can begin our simulated flights on an active runway, it disrupts ATC ground clearances. The ATC window displays the options that are available for the airport we are at. We choose our option by mouse clicking on it or by pressing the respective number on our keyboard. Microsoft Flight Simulator automatically tunes our communication radio to the appropriate frequency. We can change the frequency ourselves in the radio panel. We will benefit from listening to the automated weather reports that are available at our airport, such as the Automated Terminal Information Service, the Automated Surface Observing System, and the Automated Weather Observation System. These reports are available worldwide in Microsoft Flight Simulator at appropriate airports. After listening to the weather report, we select clearance delivery by entering the frequency in our radio panel or by mouse clicking on the line or by pressing the numeral 1 on our keyboard. For the second and third option, Microsoft Flight Simulator automatically changes our communication radio to the correct frequency. We then select Request IFR Clearance. We are Mooney N195KT. Sometimes ATC refers to us as simply Mooney 5KT. The ATC window shows our request for clearance to our destination. Clearance delivery replies with our clearance, which includes information about heading, altitude, radio frequencies, and transponder squawk code. We read back the clearance or ask ATC to repeat. ATC will ask for acknowledgement until we give it to them. The ATC window shows our readback of the clearance and ATC's acceptance of it. The transponder code is entered automatically. We can enter it ourselves before reading back and acknowledging the instruction. We may now contact ground control for clearance to taxi to the runway. We can enter the frequency in the radio panel or we can select Tune Ground Control. After we have tuned ground control, we request clearance to taxi to the active runway. ATC clears us to taxi to runway 20R using taxiways H, A, and G to hold at the runway and to contact the tower when we are ready to take off. If we forget which taxiways to use, we can refer to the text in the ATC window. This is an advantage that real-world pilots do not have. We must acknowledge the taxi clearance or request a repeat. We read back ground control's clearance to taxi to the active runway. We follow the signs for that route to the runway. If we are unfamiliar with the airport, we can activate progressive taxi. In Microsoft Flight Simulator, progressive taxi is a series of yellow arrows on the pavement that lead to the active runway. 
When we reach the runway holding area, we contact the tower, then we request takeoff clearance. The tower or departure control will clear us to take off when safe separation among aircraft is assured. The tower has cleared us to take off. We acknowledge that clearance and then we immediately taxi onto the runway and begin our takeoff roll. ATC depends on our following through to maintain safe separation. As we depart the airport, the tower hands us off to the next air traffic controller. That is usually departure control or an en route air traffic control center. We must acknowledge every handoff. ATC will ask for acknowledgement up to three times. Then it will cancel our IFR flight plan if we don't reply. Enter the new frequency into the radio panel or let Microsoft Flight Simulator change the frequency. We will hear and see communications from other aircraft throughout our flights, especially in busy airspaces. We should pay attention to our flight and respond to all ATC communications that regard us. ATC has handed us off to another controller. We tell ATC that we are going to the next controller. Then we contact the next controller as instructed. As always, we can enter the new frequency ourselves or let Microsoft Flight Simulator change it. ATC instructs us to turn right on a heading of 335 degrees, resume own navigation, and climb to and maintain 10,000 feet altitude. We acknowledge the instruction and then we change our heading and altitude. Real world pilots usually fly their aircraft first and communicate second. But if we don't change heading or altitude soon enough, ATC in Microsoft Flight Simulator will ask us to expedite our changes. The ATC window shows that we acknowledge the last instruction. We may request a new IFR destination, or a change in cruising altitude, or cancellation of our IFR flight plan if desired. Or we may do none of those. We may proceed with our flight and wait for further instructions from ATC. ATC has instructed us to turn right and head 360 degrees. We begin the turn and acknowledge the instruction. ATC hands us off from one controller to the next during our en route phases. We acknowledge the handoff and we contact the next controller. ATC instructs us to climb and maintain 12,000 feet. We begin climbing to the newly assigned altitude promptly and we acknowledge the instruction. ATC instructs us to turn left and head 305 degrees because we have drifted off course. This is one example of why a filed flight plan is required. The GPS screen shows that we are about to enter an airport's airspace. We will fly above this airspace, so there is no need for a handoff to that airport's controllers. ATC knows what we are doing because of our IFR flight plan and our transponder. When we are about 20 nautical miles to the destination airport, we should receive the weather report from that airport. The frequency is shown on the facility directory. Use Communication Radio 2, then switch back to COM1 for ATC. I have skipped over a lot of handoffs and instructions in this video to avoid needless repetition. We would normally respond to all of them, which I did do during this flight. Memphis Center instructs us to turn right heading 330 degrees and expect vectors for a runway 20 approach at our destination airport, which is Nashville International. We may acknowledge the assigned approach, or we may request a different approach. For simplicity, we will accept the assigned approach. It makes things easier for us and for everyone else when we approach and land at the airport. ATC has instructed us to descend to 3,000 feet. We begin our descent promptly and we acknowledge the instruction. We are handed off from the en route center to Nashville Approach. We tell Nashville Approach that we are at 11,300 feet heading toward 3,000 feet. Nashville Approach gives us barometric pressure reading of 2982 inches. We must reset our altimeter to this reading so we will enter Nashville's airspace at the correct altitude. 
ATC vectors us into position for the Runway 20L approach at Nashville. ATC gives us detailed instructions for entering the approach at Runway 20L. It has vectored us to enter the ILS approach and it has handed us off to the Nashville Tower. We may select from the four options or we may proceed as instructed. Nashville Tower tells us to make a straight in approach to runway 20L and it gives us the current altimeter reading at the airport. We acknowledge the instruction. We are responsible for resetting our altimeter and tuning the ILS frequency on our navigation radio. ATC has cleared us to land and we have acknowledged the clearance. We may tune and listen to the ATIS report for this airport, but that should have been done earlier. We may declare a missed approach. If we declare a missed approach, ATC will give us new instructions. We may request airport direction, which should not be necessary if we have followed ATC's vectors. We may also do none of these and proceed with our landing approach. We usually can expect no further communications from ATC until after we land, unless we are ordered to go around, or we choose to abort the landing and do a missed approach. ATC instructs us to exit the runway when able. We have requested ATC clearance to taxi to the parking area. ATC has cleared us to taxi to parking and has given us taxiway routings H2, H, L, L8, and L7. If we forget which taxiway to use next, we can refer to the text in the ATC window. We may turn on progressive taxi or we may ignore this option and follow the taxiway signs. Progressive taxi leads us to our final stopping point. Congratulations! You have seen how to use air traffic control for instrument flight rules in Microsoft Flight Simulator. Just a little practice will give you the confidence and experience that will make it easy and natural. I have made other instructional videos for home flight simmers like you. They cover flight planning, using GPS, using autopilot, using instrument approach charts, and flight rules. I'm sure you will enjoy them. I have written and published eight books for home flight simmers like you. They cover basic maneuvers, navigation, glass cockpits, jet simming, and more. I'm sure you will enjoy them.